Hello everybody. We're going to uh, talk about one point perspective today and I'm going to make a drawing and kind of just uh, uh, riff over top of it uh, in terms of some concepts and ideas to think about. Uh, one point perspective um, is kind of what it says. Um, you have what's called one vanishing point and that exists on the horizon line, which is that blue line. Now the horizon line is not uh, we're necessarily with the sky and you know, ground meet, but it's your eye level. So it could be above where sky and ground meet, or it could be below it, but kind of the default sometimes is uh, people will um, call that, you know, if it's a desert or something, you know, it might as well be where the sky and ground meet because the terrain is so flat. So I'm kind of drawing right there, um, you know, rudimentary kind of um, maybe railroad track or something like that. So we live in a um, world of geometry, right? Um, so embedded in geometry is this notion of parallel lines, right? Horizontal, in this case, um, horizontal lines, lines running um, uh, along the earth, right? Um, you know, flat, not vertical in, in this case. So uh, parallel lines, this could be a sidewalk, could be a road, that um, move back into space because of the geometry, you know, edges of the road, where the, the, the rails, whatever, will um, appear to uh, vanish at, a, at what's called the vanishing point. Now, the horizon line can be anywhere on your composition. It can be up, down, you know. Um, it is a horizontal line, so it you know, stretches all the way across as a horizontal line. Um, but um, you can put it low on the composition if you want to do things in the sky, or high up on the composition if you want to do things you know, low on the, you know, show a lot of stuff on the ground, etc. In this case, right now, it's a little below halfway. Um, there's kind of two sets of sidewalks or, or you know, um, um, railroad uh, rails. Now what I'm doing is um, putting a guideline so that I'm going to kind of uh, build maybe uh, telephone poles or tele telegraph poles along the railroad tracks, right? You know, just kind of, kind of fantastic. Fan, fanciful sort of kind of image here. Um, now notice the tops of the poles are above your eye line, right? So they go down to the vanishing point. Um, so the bottoms of the poles and the tops of the poles are run along um, parallel lines. It just so happens that the parallel lines in this case are uh, exist on a vertical plane, right? That are, it is going off into the distance, almost like you can kind of see, you know, you could build an interior space this way, which we'll be doing later on with two-point perspective. You know, I got a, I've got a floor and I got a wall, right? Could be like a long hallway. And in this case, I'm just kind of putting those, you know, wires there to kind of indicate maybe it's um, telephone lines. So if the li if the horizontal lines aren't going away from you, moving away from you, they're absolutely horizontal on the paper, right? They're parallel with the top and bottom of the paper. If the horizontal lines are moving away from you into the distance, they have to go to that vanishing point. Here I'm kind of showing you, move, I can move the um, move the horizon line up, right? It just gives me more um, space to work on the ground. Um, so my, I'm not raising or lowering my eye level. All I'm doing is recomposing the drawing. You don't have any sense of perspective until you have objects in the field of view, okay? Um, so I don't know what's high or low until I start to build things in there, right? So obviously the road tracks are below, um, uh, you know, I'm kind of standing on them, right? So um, they're kind of below the, the eye level, right? They come down to where your feet would be. But as I showed you with the, those um, poles, they can go above your eye level too, or above your head level. So here's a, I get just a, again another example of that. I'm kind of standing in the middle of the middle railroad tracks, right? And then you have the other ones going off to the side, both going to the same vanishing points because the railroad tracks are parallel with each other as well. Okay. So realize that the horizon line is not does not mean where the sky and ground comes together. It does in this scenario because it's like this big flat plane or something we're drawing, right? Desert scene, maybe. So um, what I'm going to have you do is kind of 
Uh, I think I'll get to this here. We'll see where we're at. Um, create a bunch of uh, cubes. Okay, the first thing to learn how to draw in terms of doing perspective is a cube. Um, so I'm going to start, if it's one point perspective, you start with the facing part of the cube or box. We can either call it a cube or box. I tend to call it a cube. But a cube, technically speaking, is um, symmetrical on all sides, but a box isn't. So, But I'll still probably call it cubes. So what I do, I have the flat plane of the box facing me directly, as I said, lines that, you know, lines or planes that aren't moving away from you in a one-point scheme are parallel with the edges of the paper. Notice the two vertical lines are parallel with the left and right, and the up and down are, ver are parallel with the top and bottom. But the lines that recede, the edges that recede, go back to the vanishing point. Now I'm drawing the other side of the box, okay? So those lines, again, now are flat. That, that, that end of the box is flat to me, you know, facing me directly. It's not, it's neither moving away from me or towards me. So I've got two planes that are not moving away from me, the front and back of the box, and I have four planes, bottom, right, top, and left, that are moving away from me. And I, I, all I did was kind of draw that first shape and from all four corners projected back to the vanishing point to create the, the movement back in space then decided on one side or the other of the box how deep I wanted it to be. Um, and then, um, you know, put another vertical line down to end the, um, you know, the, the um, box, you know, to kind of create an end to it uh, or a back to it, right? And now I'm erasing away all the lines of projection. Those are called lines of projection, um, projecting to the vanishing point. Um, this is kind of an automatic program, right? It does it automatically. You're going to be doing it with a straight edge. Um, you know, it just um, makes it go a little faster here uh, for the demonstration. So I'm, now I'm drawing another one, right? Maybe a little bit further back in space. How do we see? How do we know that? Because it's up a little higher on the picture plane. Projecting. Uh, sometimes that works. Sometimes it a line back up to the vanishing point. Now, I'm not going to go all the way because it automatically does it. You know, the, the, this program allowed me to get the proper angle. You have to go to that vanishing point uh, with those lines that are receding. Otherwise, if you don't have the discipline to do that, you start making up those angles, it gets all kind of out of whack. So every line that you do that's moving away from you must go to that single vanishing point. That's why they call it one-point perspective. So essentially, one-point perspective is... Um, one side of the box, you know, the two parallel edges or two parallel planes are perfectly parallel with your body, right? You're facing them directly, and all other planes are moving away from you, and they must go to the vanishing point. So you can kind of see, and I'm doing this in a, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you to do this, and you can gently erase away uh, the lines um, that you wouldn't see if these boxes were not transparent. But I'm drawing the box so that I see all six sides of the box. A cube or a box has six sides. Bottom, top, left, right, front, back. Okay. Now it's going to get a little bit um, kind of funky in terms of uh, you know, what's the front, what's the back, because you get this optical illusion thing starting to go. So what I would suggest to do is gently, because I do want to see your work, gently erase away the lines that you wouldn't see if these cubes or boxes were um, opaque, okay? And I'll show you that in a second. So now I'm putting one above the horizon line. I haven't drawn the horizon line. When I click on the, the program, it automatically pops in there. But a little bit later here, I'll probably pop a horizon line in there. So those go down to the vanishing point, right? Because they're above your head, right? So they're going to come down to the vanishing point. And then randomly think how deep I want it. And just on that side that's facing me, I just put a straight line, go straight over, straight up. And if I got everything figured out right, it usually works out pretty good, straight over, okay? If you're, if you're matching the, everything up to the vanishing point, all those points will kind of uh, perfectly line up with one another. If you, and if what happens sometimes is students will not get the verticals, just vertical, not do the horizontals, perfectly horizontal. They'll do okay with the angle lines going to the vanishing point, but they'll start tipping and tilting that. Now look at that box, it's kind of doing an optical illusion thing, right? I don't know what's front and back on it. 
So I'm going to kind of gently erase away the areas at the back, right? Now it's kind of popping into, you know, into our the scheme here. You know, it makes more sense. You can see just a little sliver of the underneath of the, of the cube, right? A lot of the left side and all of the front side. And then those the back, you know, the other three planes kind of disappear because I'm kind of erasing them away. So what I'm going to do in these drawings is kind of connect these boxes, you know, kind of make a... Uh, the nice thing about doing transparent boxes, you can connect things to the other side of the boxes. I want you to be able to demonstrate that, that to me in your drawing. Uh, so you got to always know the area behind the box. You know, what kind of space is that cube or box occupying? Students always want to default to drawing flat shapes. It's easier that way, right? So even though I'm erasing those back lines away, I'm not erasing them totally because I might need to use those to kind of construct a, you know, something on, you know, tack another little box or, or platform onto. Again, uh, all these, um, because they're all parallel with one another in reality, there I'm going to put the um, horizon line, and I'll see, see that there is a constant. Um, because the, the, the planes here, the receding planes are all parallel with one another, i.e. the boxes are all lined up perfectly. There's only one vanishing point, and they can all go to that same vanishing point, no, no matter where the box is in this, in this scheme. Because, you know, in this made-up scheme, uh, I'm saying that they're all going to the same vanishing point. Now you could have boxes that are skewed, you know, turned at angles to one another, and still could have a, be a single vanishing point. So you could have a number of singular vanishing points along that, um, you know, along that uh, horizon line. Just you know, it would kind of indicate that the um, each little box maybe was uh, skewed at a different angle, but each box would have a single vanishing point. We'll do um, two point in, in a little bit, you know, and, uh, after this, and you'll kind of see how that's different. So what I'm doing there, see, I can kind of see on the other side of the box there. So I know I'm just attaching a kind of lower, smaller little um, platform, right? And because I can, I can think of these things in tra terms of transparencies, I know how much is going to stick out from behind the first box I drew, right? Because I can see through it. So, and I know that I'm, one plane's butting up against the other. You can kind of see the left side of that short box butts right up against the right side of the taller box, right? Now I'm kind of getting rid of all that stuff. And I can even get rid of that adjoining line there, right? So it becomes a shape. Now I've made a kind of step shape out of putting two boxes right next to one another, right? Um, so that's why the transparency is so nice. You can kind of construct, you know, Lots of different types of shapes. Now, we don't know if these boxes are, one is floating higher than the other, one is, you know, where's that hovering one? Is it way in the distance? Is it, you know, we don't really know yet because it has no kind of co coordinate. You know, I haven't kind of grounded, I haven't hooked them together yet. But kind of the sky's the limit, no pun intended here. You can kind of invent space as you go. That's the kind of beauty of, um, I, you know, why I always kind of got a kick out of you know, using the cube to construct. Now, I realize animations, you know, when you do an anim, you know, if you're interested in animation, uh, 3D animation, you know, cartoons, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it, it's made using th these schemes, right? Using geometric forms, softening them up, putting, you know, texture on, you know, then voila, you have a, a creature, an animal moving through a movie set, right, or something. So, um, learning how to kind of create a sense of perspective and a you know convincing sense of three-dimensional space remember this is just on a flat sheet of paper in this case it's a computer screen right but still flat so but it is creating an illusion right on it has everything to do with the angles with which these lines that are receding uh, are, are moving at and they all go to that vanishing point now notice I'm Again, now building a low, lower plinth here, right? The right side of this lower plinth or this lower platform butts right up against the left side of that taller box. You can see they, they share a plane in common, right? That bottom line is both the bottom line of the, of the lower box, and it's also the bottom line of the left side of the 
a little taller box there, right? And then, uh, you know, start to clean up things, you know, still, you know, when you do this, vaguely let those lines hang out, you know, let them be there. But because I want to see that you understand the transparency inherent in, in building these cubes. So I've made an L form on the other side, right? Kind of a step form. Now it's hard to know whether they're uh, that one now. The one to, on the right side looks like it's either floating up higher, or in the distance, right? Okay, so we got to kind of, you know, if I want to connect those, I got to kind of figure that out as I go here. So now I'm going to build a taller form that's going above the horizon line. So the top of this form will go downward to the to the um, um, to the vanishing point, right? So there's the front plane of that of the new box I'm building, and the boxes can be you know various shapes. They don't have to be um, you know um, like a you know perfect cube. They can be elongated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm drawing every plane in here. I guess you can count them, and I, I think I do in this one. I think I'll kind of put little circles counting all the planes on this one. Okay. So I just finished that cube off. I started by. Um, you know, doing the bottom of it and building up from there. You build from what you know, and what I knew was the top of that short um, um, platform, right? So, uh, oh, there you are. Now I'm identifying. There's the front plane. That's the side plane. That's the back plane. There's the side plane. There's the top plane, and there's the bottom plane. You can kind of imagine that of that elongated cube. Okay, it's kind of hard to kind of identify them because they're merging into one another. But and then I'm going to clean that up. You can kind of, uh, you know, if something goes over top of the horizon line, you can kind of erase that too. When you do your drawing, kind of that's a pretty good space there. Right? You know, maybe two thirds the height, and make sure the line horizon line goes straight across. Right, it's not tipped one one way or another. And you stretch it, and that's why the yardstick, you have yardstick. You stretch that all the way across the horizontal uh, piece of paper. And then where it's, you know, if something's blocking it, you can erase the horizon line away so you can't see through the uh, object. Okay, so I've created, a, you know, kind of interesting J form or something out of, the, um, you know, out of um, three cubes, right, that I made, each, each having a different kind of dimension. To them. And then what you can do is, to, to clarify things too, which I have students do, is just go a little darker with the lines you know you're going, you know, kind of, so we can kind of go lightly to begin with, you know, have a nice light touch. And then the, when you start to kind of are certain about things, you can um, uh, go a little darker with the, with the uh, lines just to lock things in a little bit more. So notice Either a plane is facing me directly, or it's moving away from me to the vanishing point. So that's a sign of a one-point scheme. These front planes on all these cubes are absolutely parallel with our eyes, or our shoulders, or our body, however you want to kind of define that. So now I'm going to try to figure out how to connect these two units. So what I'm going to do is go along the ground, using the vanishing point, projecting out, right? perpendicular to that unit, to that box, from the vanishing point. So it's like a sidewalk or something, right? I'm going across, and where they intersect one another, that now, now they're all on the same plane, right? See how much that bigger that one is than, than we thought it would be? Because it's intersecting it, uh, right near the other one, right? Now I'm getting a little vertical dimension here, right? So that line is giving... I'm creating a platform, um, and there is where the new platform, left side of the new platform, butts up, up against the right side of the original box. And then I go over, giving dimension to everything, right? Can you see that? It's a little complicated. See, I just drew a box, right? It's a real low platform. Now I'm going to draw one more box here, which will be the one it butts up against that unit. 
It's a little longer, right? There's just a little notch cut out over there. So I've got two boxes, two low platforms that I've butted up against one another, right? One stretches all the way back to that right unit. In fact, I'm making that one into a third box right there, right? So you can see that it's a tiny little box between uh, the two other boxes, low uh, platform boxes, that I'm going to make into one big unit. It'd be like a walkway or something maybe, huh? You know. So now my job is to... Uh, so there's uh, one, two, three little boxes that I kind of butted up against each other to connect these two units together. So now I'm going to erase all the stuff I don't need. That kind of sometimes is as hard as making the drawing, right? What do you what do you erase? You got to kind of the key to this is draw a little bit, step back it away, and look at your drawing from a distance. You'll get a whole different kind of perspective. No pun intended, because all these lines will start like merging together. And it's like I don't know what is what. So when you step back from it, you start to get a better sense of things. So and that's all. You know, if you're a little confused, walk away come back to it and you'll see it brand new. So that's kind of all one unit there right now. Yeah? A big one long facing uh, unit that's facing me directly. And you have that little cutout over there, right? Which is cool. You know, those are sorts of things you, you wouldn't uh, normally um, think about, right? And I didn't need that little line there because that, that one part runs all the way in behind the low, the low platform, right? So um, it's all one unit, kind of. It's a little L unit going the opposite direction now. Now the object here, I'm, I'm going to try to probably here connect that floating box now down to, uh, and I think I do it in a, you know, the, with two legs and they're little different size legs, but they're kind of different size legs, but it works. So kind of the um, sky's a limit. Excuse me. When you do this stuff, um, you're kind of creating space, right? I could go back, you know, way back. It gets, you know, the things will get smaller and kind of more minute. The de you know, the spaces get more cramped. So there's a certain limit to how far you can go back in space, probably with this scale of things that we're drawing here, but. Uh, could come forward, right, into the foreground, could come off of the picture plane. You know, I chose not to do that, but, you know, you could do that. And everything is obeying. All the, the edges that are not facing me directly are going to the vanishing point, right? Every one of those angles are going to that one vanishing point because all the, the planes in this drawing that aren't facing me are parallel to one another. So they have to go to the same vanishing point. Go a little bit more here. I think I'll just connect probably the uh, um, that floating box to the uh, down to the bottom box, and I think I finish up there. I'm kind of just narrow. I drew the, make the drawings, and then I'm just kind of narrating it uh, after the fact and kind of just describing the process. So that leg I was going to make is a little too wide. So all of a sudden now I've given that, just by connecting that to the plinth, right, to that bottom platform, I've let the viewer know and myself know that that floating box is not way in the distance, right? It's now hovering over top of that low platform be just because I dropped verticals down, right, and stopped right at the platform. I could have stopped on the other side of the platform and all of a sudden that box would have been a little bit further away from us and a little bigger in scale. So, um, you know, it just depends what you want in the drawing. Now I'm, I'm even, you know, drawing all six sides of this little bit of a, you know, kind of column cube that I'm making here just because I want to understand the dimensionality. I want to understand the footprint of it on the, um, you know, on that low platform. So. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through the motion of drawing, you know, even that top little plane in there to uh, create a sense of, um, 
It'll give me a cent an area that it's that it's touching the uh, underneath part of that upper cube. Now you know I'm, I can't see through it, right? So I'm going to kind of see the back part of that platform. I'm getting rid of that, erasing away the van the horizon line a little bit, right? Now I'm going to kind of erase too much, probably, and then you go back in and clean things up by. Uh, Kind of restating some things, but you know, your eraser is kind of it's kind of difficult to erase sometimes. So now that thing's kind of you know kind of funky. It's kind of this big object floating on this um, post, right? Um, all of a sudden, I connected that cube to the, uh, and in my kind of the way I'm looking at, it, kind of brought it closer to us because it felt like it was a little far away. So by just dropping verticals down and, and hitting the uh, platform underneath, all of a sudden that cube came a little closer to us. Just kind of cleaning things up here. And I think I put one more leg on it, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, I stretched this out a little bit. So um, I, it felt a little small to me or something, so I'm just kind of popping on a, another little cube on the side of it. And I, you know, there I'm even like figuring out where everything is, right? I want to draw that cube in full. So, you know, I'm kind of figuring out the whole dimension of that cube, that new little slice of that cube, right? Then I'm kind of popping on there and then I'll probably erase I think I erase away the joining plane, you know, here in a second just to... So I got like two cubes on the top stuck to one another, right? Slight, you know, so there's a kind of plane slicing through and all. now I'm going to erase that plane. That used to be the outer or the right side of the, you know, floating cube, right? So all I do was, did was um, pop another cube onto it, right? Just to make it a little bit bigger. So thinking in terms of transparencies, the other side of the cube is very important. Now I'm really kind of going at a pretty rapid rate pace here. I sped it up a little bit and doing kind of some sophisticated stuff. So if you can do this, fine. If you can kind of just throw some cubes in there, or maybe a couple L's or step cubes that, you know, two, two butted up against one another or something, that's fine too. But, you know, I want you to spend time on it. You know, I want you to kind of play with this. There's only three types of lines you use when you're doing this. Lines that go to the vanishing point, absolutely vertical lines, like that line, and absolutely horizontal lines, meaning um, parallel to the top and bottom of the paper. That's it, just two types of lines. So there's the front edge of a new little leg I'm making on this thing. See, and then I I think I drive it back into space here. Yep, see that little little lines going back to the vanishing point. It's kind of hard to manipulate this digital pencil here. So there's the footprint of the new, um, that's the back corner of the cube, footprint of the new elongated cube that will be the other column holding this thing up. Now that one's a little wider in thickness, right, than the other one, the front edge. You know, you could kind of play with that if you want it to be the same. That's fine. I'm not that concerned about it. So you can see how you can kind of just kind of keep adding on some, you know, you're kind of creating ob objects, you know, volumes in space. Um, really kind of a sculptural thing when you think about it. I mean, I've kind of got my master's degree in sculpture, so maybe I'm kind of interested in this stuff because that has always been my interest in terms of, you know, dimensions and forms and volumes and 
that sort of thing. So But if you're into interior design, you want to get into uh, 3D animation, those sorts of things, you're going to have to kind of do all this stuff. Uh, you know, like I said, you, can, you create the characters, the creatures, using geometric forms and then softening them up. And then also you're going to have to create houses and sets and that sort of thing as well, right? And it's all going to have to obey uh, you know, vanishing points, you know, perspective, traditional perspective. So again, everything, every line that's moving away from me goes to the vanishing point. Every horizontal line that's not moving away from me is just horizontal. Got to make sure it's absolutely horizontal, absolutely parallel to the top and bottom of the paper. And then the other lines you have are verticals. Three choices. That's it in, in a, in a one-point scheme. So we're getting towards the end here of this little kind of sculptural configuration I made. So, yeah, do the best you can. You can make a configuration like this. You can do a couple little groupings. Uh, try to do, uh, you know, first play around with doing some cubes, right? You know, scatter a couple cubes throughout the composition. Make sure they're transparent. You know, you count the sides. You see all six sides. And um, uh, and then, you know, gently erase away the, the lines you wouldn't see. Minimum amount of cubes you'd see or, or sides you'd see on a cube is one where it's covering up the vanishing point. Um, then you have have examples where you have two. If it's like right below the vanishing point, you'd only see the front and the or the top and the front, for instance, after you erase away the marks. The maximum amount you'd see on a cube on an opaque cube is three. Okay, but on a transparent cube, you see all six sides. So make sure you do that. So I think we're getting to the end here. So I'm going to uh, probably make one more, I think, here, if I recall. So I'm starting with the footprint of it, right, where the, the space it's going to occupy. And then I move my, move my way up. You know, I'm only just going as high as the, um, you know, the existing uh, platform there. And where they, you know, meet each other there is going to be the front, right? Then straight over, straight up where those two intersect one another is the new corner. Project that back into space, going back to the vanishing point. I kind of had a problem with this one. I couldn't get it quite there. That's a little better, I guess, but it's still a little high. And um, so there's the new transparent cube, right? And that cube is right underneath the vanishing point, if you notice. So when I erase everything, you'll only see two planes of that cube, the top and the front. Those two side planes are going to disappear. So that's an instance where a, a cube existing right underneath the vanishing point will only have two planes. Now I'm going to merge it into the, uh, you know, the plane that is the, um, you know, the platform there, right? So I'll get rid of that line, that's div the dividing line. So what I've done is kind of broken up that front space a little bit, right? Kind of a little more interesting now. It's coming. I could do one on the other side, coming even further maybe or something, you know. I won't do that, but uh, that's, that's an option. You can kind of just keep going and going and going, right? Um, and then, you know, probably clean things up here a little bit, I'll erase that a little ex excess there. So, you know, that's what you, you kind of, you know, want to make sure all the, you know, you're hitting everything in the right place and kind of clean up the, um, you know, go again, go a little heavier. I'd use like a two, two. B or something like that, or in a 2H pencil, and then go over it with a 2B when you're satisfied with anything. Using your straight edge, right? You get project. You don't. You know. You don't need to draw a line all the way to the vanishing point, but as long as that same size of the straight edge is lined up with that vanishing point that you're drawing the line on, just draw it. You know where you need it, right? Um, so you don't have like 10,000 lines moving to the vanishing point. Okay, I think that's it. Um, can do the best you can. Could be separate cubes. Could be uh, you know five, six separate cubes. Connect them. Make, make gels out of them. Whatever. Um, but just kind of have fun with it. Again, one point perspective. Thank you.